Hi everyone, I'm Farida and this is the Dental Radiology. Our videos are getting kind of fancy these days. Okay, let's continue our intraoral anatomy with a practical imaging of the mandible incisor. Hope you're ready for this session and let's nail it. So, what landmarks we see in the practical imaging of the mandibular incisor? The mental ridge, the genial tubercle, the lingual foramen, and the mental fossa. Okay, let's see each part on the mandibular bone. On the lingual view, the A is representing the lingual foramen and the B, the genial tubercle. On the facial view, you can say the labial side of the bone. The C is pointing to the mental ridge and the D is pointing to the mental fossa. So let's see each landmark on the practical radiography. On the lingual surface, we see the genial tubercles. The genial tubercles are also called the mental spine. There are bony projections located on the lingual surface and the midline. There are attachments for muscles like genioglose and geniohyoid. On the practical imaging of the mandibular incisors, it appears as radiopac area in the midline, almost in the apex of the incisor. Also on the lingual view, we see the lingual foramina. Lingual foramina is located in the same region as the genial tubercles. The neurovascular bundle passes through this foramina. We can have one foramen or even more than one foramina in this region. In practical radiograph, it is seen as a single round radiolucent like a hole in the center of the genial tubercles. So we see this hole radiolucent hole right in the middle of the midline. The mental ridge. The mental ridge is also called the mental protuberance. This represents this big bony projection on the buckle of the mandible. You can even touch it on your chin. You can see it's kind of a dense bone there. On this view, you can also see the mental ridge. Let's see the mental ridge closer on the facial view of the mandible. On the practical radiographs of the mandibular incisors, the mental ridge is seen as two radiopac lines splitting bilaterally forward and upward towards the midline. It can be variable in the density and where it starts. Sometimes it starts in the primular area in each side and goes up towards the midline and it can be superimposed on the mandibular incisor roots. The mental fossa. The mental fossa is a depression on the labial aspect of the mandible above the mental ridge. So this is the depression in the labial aspect. You can even touch it just below your lower lip. Why are we using the word mental when you're thinking about something you put your hand just under your chin, so it's kind of a thinking position. You can remember the mental name for that. Okay. On the practical imaging, you see it starts from the midline and extending laterally. Because of the depression, it results in thinning of the bone in this area. So the image of the depression is radiolucent. It can overlie on the roots of the mandibular incisors and it can mimic a practical disease involving the incisors. But the intact lamina dura and no clinical signs and the vitality of the teeth can rule out the pathology. The nutrient canals. The nutrient canals carry a neurovascular bundle and it appears as a radiolucent line. Kind of, you can say they're uniform in the width. They're most often seen in older patients and Patients with advanced periodontitis because it causes thinning of the bone and it can be more.
more evident in these bones that they have resorption. They're mostly often seen in the mandibular path where gravity. They can be running vertically from the inferior dental canal directly towards the apex of the tooth, or it can sometimes be interdental. Okay, that's all for today's session. If you missed the last session about the maxillary anatomy, feel free to watch the videos. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please subscribe and press the bell button to get the notification for the next videos. Give it a like and share it with your friends. Have a good day.